Hello there, welcome back. This video we will be discussing about data binding in WPF. I will try to keep it very simple. First, let us create a project, and I already have the basic page here. We start with uh, .NET 6 framework, and you can also go with uh, anything you want. We'll directly do a debug to see how it looks. That's it. So it's a empty window, and we have not added anything. And then that's cool. For this video, I will not be using any NuGet package. Instead, we will directly be setting up a view and then a view model, and we will start the data binding. And uh, we will create a new view model. So we have a view model or at least we call it as a view model and then we have a view both of them doesn't have any connection to each other so first and foremost thing go to your uh, code behind of the view there are more than one way to achieve this but i find this is the easiest way the window dot data context is new main view so what i am saying is the data context of the main window is uh, instance of main view here first step we will see a very simple data binding we will have a text box or we will have a text block uh, to begin with uh, because it's going to be a label and uh, let's say uh, for, we will have two text blocks inside a stack panel that's fine so now we have a text block now this name is present here what if we need this name not to be hard coded but to be coming from the view model so let's create a new property here and when it starts name is lingo okay so this is very basic and uh, what we have here is a property a name and the name has a value and in the view we don't have the um, binding between the view model and the view so all we need to do is just go ahead and do binding between name so how, how does it work because in the code behind i have already given that main vm instance is the data context for this main window so which means when i do a binding it will directly go into the data context and it will check whether the property is present here or not and then we will start binding so in that way the name is bounded here that's cool let's check if this works there we go this is fine this is cool this works so now let me stop and i go back and this time what i will do i will change the name here from lingam to uh, let's call it as john to and let's run again it should work again it works now let us take it one step forward and along with the text block i will add one more stack panel here when i type the name here this value should be displayed in the text block that's my, my that's my main idea right so let's do binding name now let's see how it works it should start with john doe in both places john doe here john doe there now let's try to remove lingo now what happened it's not updating so obviously we will first think that it could be the reason because it is not triggered let's see uh, or we can do one more thing we will add a dummy text box text equals hello and there we go okay fine let me put some one two three it is not updated when i move back it is updated so now what happened here is when i am typing the value to john doe 
it obviously is changing the value in my main VM. So basically in the view model, the property, the value is getting changed when I type 4 and 5. But it is not getting updated immediately because the change is not triggered back to the view. So when the change will be triggered back to the view, only when you lose focus. So when you lose focus of this one, the change is triggered. And now I will go back. If you don't want that to happen, you can go ahead and say, property change trigger or update source trigger is property change. What I'm saying here is, whenever the name property is changed in the source, initiate a trigger. So the trigger is called as update source trigger. So whenever the source is updated, just trigger it. That's what we are saying here. So when this happens, immediately the change should be reflected. Let's see. One, two, three. So what happens here is, property name gets changed when we type one two three and moment the name property gets changed the trigger is initiated which in turn updates the ui that's why the welcome john doe also got updated now you might be wondering now data mining is all fine and it all works but where is this i notify property changer because everyone talks about i notify property change but without i notify property change we are able to make the changes and it even reflects the reason is the property or uh, you know in programming it is in the stack memory and it the address of the name is referenced in both places so when when, when you change the value in the name address in one place since it is already linked to the ui it is also reflected in the other place but i don't want to complicate the explanation so very simple when you are making some change to the property from the code behind or from directly from within the view model then you need to call the i notify property changed or else it will not be reflected back in your ui so now it, it all looks fine we will do something else so whenever the name changes our ui should be changed so what i am going to do there is no i notify property changed i am going to start with the dispatcher timer So what happens here is when we initiate our view, we are uh, waiting for 5 seconds, 6 seconds and after that we are changing the timer and we are going to see whether the name is updated in the UI or not. So this will tell us the importance why we need the iNotify property. So there is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Just take a look at this debug output. John Doe. So initially it was John Doe 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then we made it as timer change. So currently the property value here is timer changed. How do we know that? When we try to write something, existing value is timer changed and incoming value is John Doe 1, 2, 3. So when you see here, John Doe 1, 2, 3. So the property got changed in between, but it was not displayed to us. The reason being we didn't have I notify property changed. So all you need is I notify property changed. So this, uh, when you implement the interface, it's nothing but a property handler and uh, you need to set up this property change the event handler and you need to invoke the handler. Whenever some property is changing, you need to call this handler. So how do you do that? We can set up a small uh, uh, void method and let's call it as on property changed. So there is a way to send the property name. Um, you can directly call the call member name. So whichever property calls, but we are not going to complicate it here. So string prop name, what is the property name? So here, after you set the property, just call and say, hey, property name is changed, name of name. So all you need to give is, All you need to give is the uh, string value of the property. So it will tell the UI that the name property has changed. And here you just invoke the property changed and send the property name. So property changed, if it is not empty, invoke, 
sender is this a new property changed event args with the property name is prop name so it's quite simple whenever the property is changing i'm going to call a method and sending in the property and this will invoke it so the moment this property change is invoked the ui or the wp of uh, xaml will be subscribing to this property changed handler or event and whenever this event is modified it will not be notified that the name property is changed and then you will check the ui and see where the name is initiated so the name is here name is here and the name value will be updated so now what we do the same setup we will run it again and see whether the ui is getting updated or not so let's say 1 2 3 4 5 and then we need to wait for 6 seconds so you see now the timer changed so what happened here initially since we didn't have the on property changed it was not updated and now that we have i notify property changed now this got updated so this is the importance of i notify property changed and this is how we do a basic binding